Hello and welcome to The All Flies. In my last video, I recommended using RFID tags to track your luggage at airports. RFID technology evolved from the IFF system invented during the late 1930s by the RAF in Britain. The RAF realized that a system was needed to prevent friendly fire incidents, reducing the risk of accidentally engaging friendly forces. IFF systems typically involve the use of transponders or other electronic devices that emit signals or codes in response to interrogation by friendly radar. These signals or codes are interpreted by the requesting system to determine whether the target is friendly or not. IFF systems have been crucial in modern military operations as they enhance situational awareness and help prevent tragic incidents where friendly forces are mistaken as the enemy. Such a blue-on-blue -blue incident happened in World War II when pilot officer Halton Harrop was shot down due to a fault in the chain home radar system misleading the IFF operator. He was the first British pilot to be shot down in World War II and his Spitfire the first as well. This became known as the Battle of Barking Creek. The chain home radar stations detected aircraft approaching the English coast, but what they couldn't do was identify whether they were friendly or not. Researchers at Bordesley Manor in 1938 had experimented by placing reflectors on aircraft tuned to resonate to the frequency of the chain home radars. Technically, that was unreliable, so they turned to an entirely different system consisting of a set of tracking stations using high-frequency direction finders. RAF aircraft radios were modified to send out a 1 kHz tone for 14 seconds every minute, allowing stations ample time to measure the aircraft's bearing. Known as pipsqueak, this system was labour-intensive and did not display its information directly to the radar operators. A system that worked directly with the radar was clearly desirable. The first IFF transponder was the IFF Mark I. These were tuned to the signal from the chain home radar amplifying it and broadcasting back out the aircraft's antenna. The IFF Mark II was introduced in early 1940. Mark II had a series of separate tuners inside, tuned to different radar bands, while an automatic gain control solved the problem of it sending out too strong a signal. Mark II sets were not available in quantity, and only a small number of RAF aircraft carried it by the time of the Battle of Britain. In 1940, English engineer Freddie Williams suggested using a single separate frequency for all IFF signals. The cavity magnetron, introduced by John Randall and Harry Boot at the University of Birmingham in 1940, made possible a transponder which would respond to specific interrogators rather than replying directly to received radar signals. These interrogators worked on a limited selection of frequencies no matter what radar they were paired with. The system also allowed limited communication, such as transmitting a coded May Day response. The Mark III sets were designed and built by Ferranti in Manchester. Equivalent sets were manufactured in the US, copies of British sets, so that Allied aircraft would be identified upon their interrogation by each other's radar. IFF sets were obviously highly classified. Many of them were wired with explosives in the event of a force landing behind enemy lines. Alongside the switch to turn on the unit was the IFF destruct switch to prevent its capture by the enemy. Many a pilot chose the wrong switch and blew up his IFF unit. The thud of a controlled explosion and the acrid smell of burning insulation in the cockpit did not deter many pilots from destroying these units time and time again. The German IFF radio FUG25A Erstling was developed in 1940. British military scientists found a way of exploiting this by building their own transmitters called Perfectos, which triggered a response from any FUG25A system in the vicinity. When these German systems responded, the signal was received by the antenna system from these English Perfectos radars mounted on Mosquito fighters. 
They triangulated the source, thus locating the German aircraft. The United States Naval Research Laboratory's own IFF system used separate frequencies for interrogation and response. One IF signal wouldn't trigger an IFF response on another aircraft. Development continued. During the 1980s, a new civilian mode, mode S, was added that allowed greatly increased amounts of data to be encoded in the return signal. This was used to encode the location of the aircraft from the navigation system. This is a basic part of the traffic collision avoidance system we know as TCAS, which allows commercial aircraft to know the location of other aircraft in the area and avoid them without the need for ground operators. In World War I, eight submarines were sunk by friendly fire, and in World War II, an amazing 20 were sunk by friendly fire. Employing IFF in submarines was not a concern for the US military before 1990, as not many other countries possessed submarines. They deemed this as unfeasible because a signal from a submarine would lead to its discovery by a foe. It is the silent service after all. Instead, each US submarine was assigned a patrol area where the presence of any other submarine is deemed hostile. Within these assigned areas, surface ships and aircraft refrain from any anti-submarine warfare. Only the resident submarine may target other submarines in its own area. Well, there are simpler means to establish identity. Picture vast armies facing each other behind flags and pennants. On the night of the 5th of June 1944, invasion stripes were painted on Allied aircraft to identify them as friendly to the trigger-happy gunners on the invasion fleet. Stripes were also used during the Korean War in 1950 and during the Suez Operation of 1956. Egypt was also operating British planes, so you can see how confusion could reign. During the Soviet-led invasion of Czechoslovakia in 1968, the Soviet Union used a series of white stripes on the armoured vehicles of its invasion forces because they used predominantly the same type of combat vehicles as the armed forces of Czechoslovakia. In addition to that, certain Soviet Air Force aircraft, such as the MiG-21 fighters, were given to red stripes on the fuselages and vertical stabilizers because these types of aircraft were used by the Czechoslovak Air Force II. In 2002, the Russian vehicles invading Ukraine displayed white letter Z because in the early part, their combat vehicles were the same as used by Ukraine. Cossack crosses are painted on Ukrainian tanks so Ukrainian drone pilots don't mistake them for the enemy. Thank you for watching. Liking and subscribing is free and helps this channel tremendously. Thank you.